Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. We create photo realistic assets together. So for today's video, I want to talk a little bit about using layer shader inside of Arnold to create a clear material difference for your asset. I have been working on this asset for a little bit and to be honest, I'm not sure where I'm going with this. I was looking at this reference in particular and uh, I was trying to create this kind of a heavy dark metal with shiny edges on it, which is not the first time I'm doing this. But one thing I really want to have on the asset is the rust and the patina surface coverage. In the beginning, I put all the diffuse together, including the metal, the rust, and the patina. This is what it looks like rendered, and this is what it looks like without rust and patina. I want to show you what the map looks like inside of Mari's. I have three different kind of metal going on. It's mostly a color difference. And then I have a layer of patina on top and a layer of rust on top. And if I turn those things off, you can see how they are affecting the diffuse map. In terms of the color of the diffuse map itself, I think is fairly close to my reference. So when I render it, I would want this kind of um, level of value and color as well. But when I actually render it, I do see quite a bit of a discrepancy between my diffuse map versus what the patina looks like on my asset right now. It looks really dark. Uh, the rust also looking really dark. It does not feel like it's an extra layer of material on top of the metal. The reason why I think that is happening is because I only have one shader for all the material currently. I have one diffuse merged with metal, patina, and rust, and I plugged into this one shader, and that's the shader I'm using to render currently. This is a metal shader currently. I have my metalness on pretty high, and I also have an IOR that's set for a metal material. So what I'm going to do now is to create an Arnold layer shader, and I'm going to start to create a different material that's more for the patina and the rust on top. If I just type layer inside of the shader tab, we can find the layer shader. And I will plug my existing material into the input one. This will be my base material. Anything I add underneath it is going to be a material on top. So if I turn on the next slot, and I will look for a new Arnold standard shader. And I'm going to plug this one into the second slot. And you can see there is a mixed slot underneath the shader area. And that's where we're going to plug in the mask to define where this material is going to be. So I'm going to assign this new layer shader to my object. And I'm also going to uh, connect my displacement for my original shader into this new shader as well, because I want my displacement to affect all the different shaders in the layer shader. I'm going to adjust this new shader just a little bit. Um, in terms of material, things like rust and patina are super simple things. I'm going to apply the same diffuse I have on the original shader into it. This diffuse already have patina and the raster color on it. I'm just going to reuse that in the new shader. So I'm going to turn the base color weight to full and uh, I'm going to use diffuse roughness just a little bit. Um, it's the kind of things I use when I do something like a concrete that's something that's super rough. I'm going to use a little bit here as well. Tone down the weight and the color of the specular a little bit. And I'm going to use the same roughness I use on the original material in this one as well. I think that's pretty much everything we need to do with this shader. It's a pretty straightforward material. The only thing we're missing right now is the mask itself for the patina and the rust. 
and uh, we will have to go back to Mari and uh, create that one. Inside of Mari, all I need to do, I already have separate masks for uh, Patina and uh, Rust in my main diffuse map. I just need to combine them. So I will create a new channel. Always have to zoom out a little bit and find where Mari put this new channel. Here it is. There's always three nodes come with the channel. Uh, one is the background color that you get by default and uh, the channel node itself. So I'm going to combine the first mask. I already connect my mask into radio transmitter, so I just need to get a radio note and connect the one to the correct transmitter. So the first one is rust. And that's what it looks like. Going to create another merge node and create another video radio node that will connect to the patina mask radio transmitter. And I will have to set the layer setting to screen to add both layer together. Now I have the combined mask for both rust and patina. I decided to just use one shader for both material for right now because they're very similar quality material. I feel like that couldn't work. I'm going to export this mask and show you um, what it looks like. Back in Maya, I'm going to apply that mask into our new material. It's in the mixed slot. And we're going to select File. Going to set it to Off so there's no blurring. And I'm going to select the maps I just exported. I'm going to set the UV tiling mode to UDIM. And I'm going to, well, I'm going to name the file first for organization. And then I'm going to only connect a red channel into the mask to make sure that we're using luminance. And that should be everything. I will render this and show you what it looks like. I only see a little patch of this and I can already see something is not going the way I want it to be. Um, I think that I might need to separate the diffuse between the grunge material on top versus the metal because the mask itself is pretty see-through. If I still have the very dark kind of like patina and rust underneath um, the new material I'm creating currently, uh, it can still make everything pretty dark. So I think the best bet is to actually completely separate the material, even on the diffuse level. So I'm going to disconnect this diffuse color from my original material. You see that I have another extra material called teeth. It's actually the exact same material as most of the body, but because that one part does not have any displacement map. So if I use the same shader that has a displacement map on it, the one area that does not have any displacement would just explode. I have another version of the displacement map that does not have patina and rust on it. It's just a metal material. I'm going to apply that one to my old shader. I'm also going to completely separate the rust and the patina material. I'm gonna duplicate the original grunge shader and create a new layer on the new layer shader for the new grunge material. Um, originally, I thought maybe I will combine the patina and the rust color together. But with blending of those colors can still be quite messy. Might as well just keep it super clean. Each material has its own shader. Gonna use the first grunge shader I created for patina and uh, use the new one for my rust. And I'm going to connect them into my layer shader. 
the first one is already connected. I just need to create a new one and uh, plug the new grunge into it. The next step is to go back to Mari. I need a new diffuse map for only patina. I need a new diffuse map for only rust and the separate masks for both of them. Before that, I'm going to connect my old roughness into my new rust shader. I think that's pretty much everything I need to plug in this shader from the existing maps. I will need to go back to Mari to create the other ones to connect after. Instead of Mari, we need to create some new channels. Um, the rust color, the patina color, the rust mask, and the patina mask. I only realized this after that I'm only using a tolerable texture inside of Mari anyways. I could have just bring a tolerable texture into my render scene. I really didn't have to export a color map for the rust and patina. I'm going to show you anyways what I did here. So I had a combined diffuse for both rust and patina. So I just need to get this part of the node graph out. Disconnect it from the original channel and uh, connect it into this new channel I just created for the rust color. I think the tiling is a little bit too big as well. Going to adjust that. I actually do not like this uh, rust tolerable. It's a little too patchy. I'd rather use something that's more uh, uniform colored. Gonna make the color a little bit more reddish and probably a little bit brighter because everything was looking a little bit dark on the render. I also have my patina color here now that I disconnected the rust from it. Going to make it a little bit brighter as well and make it a little bit more greenish. It was looking really blue. You can totally just import a tolerable inside of your shading network and not do any of this. The only map that we have to get from Mari are the material masks. So here I also have a combined version of both. I'm going to create a new channel and split up this channel into two. I'm going to detach the area that's for the rust. So once I detach it, um, the only thing that's left is the patina area. And this one will be the patina mask. I'm going to create a new channel. I'm going to connect that part of the mask into this channel and uh, wish you see the rust mask that I have for this asset. Um, it's clearly looking a lot more faded than the patina. It's kind of very gray and I want to enhance it a little bit. So I create a new merge node and I set it to screen and I'm just going to connect this new merge node into the same mask and adjust it a little bit so it's not too bright, but it's definitely being enhanced a little bit. Back in our node, I'm going to connect all the maps into the proper place. Gonna connect the rust diffuse map into the new rust shader. I'm going to change the diffuse map of our original first ground shader to just the patina diffuse map. Next, I just need to change the second layer mask to the patina mask and uh, plug in my rust mask into the last shader. That should be everything we need and I'm going to render it and show you the difference. So the first image on top is our new render and uh, the one on the bottom is the old render. I feel like you can see that the first image, it feels more like the material is sitting on top and the second image, um, it was kind of blended together and pretty dark. To be honest, for this asset in terms of material, I wasn't sure where I was going with it. 
I had this idea that I was going to use this Spanish sculptor statue as my main reference, but、uh, when I was working on it, on it, I feel like everything was looking quite generic, and、um, I was doing things that I already done before many times, so I kind of lost interest. I wanted to add a little bit more color to it by adding patina and the rust, but everything kind of just looking super procedural. I actually like the version without any rust or patina. I wish I had a better idea of what I want this thing to look like. I think mostly this is a pure sculpting practice. In terms of texturing and final design, I actually had no idea what I wanted to do. I still hope this is a helpful video for you at least, and I will have better luck working on my next asset. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and like the video. I will see you in the next one.